William Frisha Green, born William Edward Green, the 7th of September 1855 to the 5th of May 1921, was a prolific English inventor and professional photographer. He is principally known as a pioneer in the field of motion pictures, creating a series of cameras in the period 1888 to 1891 with which he shot moving pictures in London. He went on to patent an early two-color filming process in 1905. His inventions in the field of printing, including photo typesetting and a method of printing without ink, brought him wealth, as did his chain of photographic studios. However, he spent everything he earned on inventing, going bankrupt three times and being jailed once, before dying in poverty. <laughs> Early life William Edward Green was born on 7 September 1855, in Bristol. He studied at the Queen Elizabeth's Hospital School. In 1871 he was apprenticed to the Bristol photographer Marcus Gutenberg, but later successfully went to court to be freed early from the indentures of his seven-year apprenticeship. He married the Swiss Helena Frischer born Victoria Mariana Helena Frischer on 24 March 1874, and in a remarkable move for the era, decided to add her maiden name to his surname. In 1877 he set up his own studio in Bath, and by 1881 had expanded his business with more studios in Bath, Bristol and Plymouth. Cinematic inventor Experiments with magic lanterns In Bath he came into contact with John Arthur Roebuck Rudge. Rudge was a scientific instrument maker who also worked with electricity and magic lanterns to create popular entertainments. Rudge built what he called the Biophantic Lantern, which could display seven photographic slides in rapid succession, producing the illusion of movement. It showed a sequence in which Rudge with the invisible help of Frisia Green apparently took off his head. Frisia Green was fascinated by the machine and worked with Rudge on a variety of devices over the 1880s, various of which Rudge called the Biophantoscope. Moving his base to London in 1885, Frisia Green realized that glass plates would never be a practical medium for continuously capturing life as it happens and began to experiment with the new Eastman paper roll film, made transparent with castor oil, before turning his attention to experimenting with celluloid as a medium for motion picture cameras. <laughs> Movie camera. On 21 June 1889, Frisia Green was issued patent number 10131 for his camera. It was apparently capable of taking up to 10 photographs per second using paper and celluloid film. A report on the camera was published in the British Photographic News on 28 February 1890. On 18 March, Frisia Green sent a clipping of the story to Thomas Edison, whose laboratory had been developing a motion picture system, with a peephole viewer, christened the kinetoscope. The report was reprinted in Scientific American on 19 April. Frisia Green worked on a series of moving picture cameras until early 1891, but although many individuals recount seeing his projected images privately, he did not ever give a successful public projection of moving pictures. In 1890 he developed a camera with Frederick Varley to shoot stereoscopic moving images. The camera ran at a slower frame rate, and although the 3D arrangement images worked, there are no records of projection. Frisia Green's experiments in the field of motion pictures were at the expense of his other business interests and in 1891 he was declared bankrupt. To cover his debts he had already sold the rights to the 1889 moving picture camera patent for £500 £60,000 in 2016 terms. The renewal fee was never paid and the patent eventually lapsed. Topic. Color film 
Freesia Green's later exploits were in the field of color in motion pictures. From 1903 he lived in Brighton where there were a number of experimenters developing still and moving pictures in color. Initially working with William Norman Lascelles Davidson, Freesia Green patented a two-color moving picture system using prisms in 1905. He and Davidson gave public demonstrations of this in January and July 1906 and Freesia Green held screenings at his photographic studio. He also experimented with a system which he called biocolor. This process produced the illusion of true color by exposing each alternate frame of ordinary black and white film stock through two or three different colored filters. Each alternate frame of the monochrome print was then stained red or green and or blue. Although the projection of biocolor prints did provide an impression of true color, it suffered from noticeable flickering and red and green fringing when the subject was in rapid motion, as did the more popular and famous system, Kinemacolor. In 1911, George Albert Smith and Charles Urban filed a lawsuit against Freesia Green, claiming that the biocolor process infringed upon Smith's Kinemacolor patents, despite the fact that Freesia Green had both patented and demonstrated his work before Smith. Urban was granted an injunction against biocolor in 1912, but the Sussex-based, flamboyant racing driver Selwyn Edge decided to help Freesia Green by funding an appeal to the High Court. This overturned the original verdict on the grounds that Kinemacolor made claims for itself which it could not deliver. Urban fought back and pushed it up to the House of Lords, who in 1915 upheld the decision of the High Court. The decision benefited nobody. For Urban it was a case of hubris because now he could no longer exercise control over his own system, so it became worthless. For Freesia Green, the arrival of the war and personal poverty meant there was nothing more to be done with color for some years. His son Claude Freesia Green continued to develop the system with his father and, after his death, in the early 1920s, now calling it, the Freesia Green Natural Color Process, and shooting the documentary films, The Open Road, with it, which are a rare portrait of 1920s Britain in color. These were featured in a BBC series The Lost World of Freesia Green and then issued in a digitally restored form by the BFI on DVD in 2006. <laughs> <laughs> Death On 5 May 1921 Freesia Green, now a largely forgotten figure, attended an important and stormy meeting of the cinema trade at the Connaught Rooms in London. The meeting had been called to discuss the current poor state of British film distribution and was chaired by Lord Beaverbrook. Disturbed by the tone of the proceedings, Freesia Green got to his feet to speak. The chairman asked him to come forward onto the platform to be heard better, which he did, appealing for the two sides to come together. Shortly after returning to his seat, he collapsed. People came to his aid and took him outside, but he died almost immediately of heart failure. Given his dramatic death, surrounded by film industry representatives who had almost entirely forgotten about his role in motion pictures, there was a spasm of collective shock and guilt. A very grand funeral was staged for him, a two-minute silence was observed in some cinemas and a fund was raised to commission the famous architect Sir Edwin Lutyens to design a memorial for his grave. This memorial describes him as, "...the inventor of kinematography," a term William Freesia Green never used in talking about his achievements. Indeed, he often spoke generously about other workers in the field of capturing movement. He was buried in the eastern section of London's Highgate Cemetery, just south of the entrance and visible from the street through the railings. His second wife, Edith Jane, died a few months later of cancer and is buried with him. <laughs> <laughs> Legacy In 1951 a biopic was made, starring Robert Denart, as part of the Festival of Britain. The film, The Magic Box, was not premiered until the festival was nearly over, and only went on full release after it had finished. 
Despite the all-star cast and a great deal of publicity, it was a costly box office flop. Domankovich and Herbert have written, "...he was the subject of a romantic and unreliable biography, Freesha Green, close-up of an inventor, which was then turned into an even more misleading film, The Magic Box." Nonetheless, Martin Scorsese has many times cited it as one of his favorite films, and one that inspired him. Despite a campaign by Bristol photographer Reese Winston for the retention of Freesha Green's birthplace for use as a museum of cinematography, among other purposes, it was demolished by Bristol Corporation in 1958 to provide parking space for six cars. Premises in Brighton's Middle Street, where Freesha Green shared workshop space in 1905, are often wrongly described as his home. They bear a plaque in a 1924 design by Eric Gill commemorating Freesha Green's achievements, wrongly stating that it is the place where he invented cinematography. The plaque was unveiled by Michael Redgrave, who had appeared in The Magic Box, in September 1957. A modern office building a few yards away is named Freesha Green House. Other ploys include the 1930s Odeon Cinema in Kings Road, Chelsea, London, with its iconic façade, which carries high upon it a large sculpted head and shoulders medallion of William Freesha Green and his years of birth and death. There is a bronze statue of him at Pinewood Studios. In 2006, the BBC ran a series of programmes called The Lost World of Freesha Green, presented by Dan Cruikshank about Claude Freesha Green's road trip from Land's End to John O'Groats, entitled The Open Road, which he filmed from 1924 to 1926 using the biocolor process. Modern television production techniques meant they were able to remove the issues of flickering and color fringing around moving objects, which Kinemacolor and Biocolor had when projected. The result was a unique view of Britain in color in the mid-1920s. William Freesha Green was more or less banished to obscurity by film historians from the 1960s onwards, but new research is leading to a rehabilitation of his reputation and a better understanding of his achievements and his influence on the technical development of cinema. <laughs> <laughs> Life 